right. Thank you all. Uh, recommencing uh, the meeting that was recessed uh, earlier this afternoon. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Monroe County Health Department, Penny Caudill, Dr. Sharp, if you would please. This health order is issued. Are we on? Okay. This health order is issued after respectful coordination or consultation with the mayor of the city of Bloomington, the Monroe County Board of Commissioners, and representatives of the town of Ellettsville. This authority granted to me as the public health authority to act throughout the entirety of Monroe County is recognized by these units as a state power delegated to instruct, guide, and protect the health of Monroe County citizens and the constituents within. I'd like to turn this over now to Penny Caldwell, who is the administrator down here at the health department. Thank you, Dr. Sharp. So while the governor of Indiana today issued an executive roadmap for opening Indiana, the Monroe County Health Department and the health officer, Dr. Sharp, are ordering the status quo be maintained in Monroe County. Local public health authorities are given the authority to do so and to instruct their individual counties. Under that statutory authority, Monroe County will follow the previous guidelines issued by the governor, the details of which are outlined in a health order issued today, May 1st, 2020. While we are seeing improvements related to COVID-19, we are not yet where we need to be. We are using CDC gating criteria to evaluate where we are. These are the things that it is recommended that we have before we reopen further. A reduction of influenza-like illness and COVID-like illness, reduction of cases in the past two weeks, increased volume of testing, reduction of positives of, as a percentage of total tests, that we can treat all patients without crisis care in our hospitals, and that we have robust testing program and contact tracing in place. By mid-month, we will have increased capacity for robust testing and enhanced contact tracing. We have been doing testing. The, health, the IU Health has been good about uh, providing our community with testing, but we will have more robust testing available in the coming weeks. These two changes, the testing and the contact tracing being more robust, will enable us to understand where we are and enable quicker identification and respond to any surges. It is with that in mind that we are maintaining the status quo. We will maintain active monitoring and report back any significant changes that may impact our community. And with that, I would say that we all took this very seriously. We know that it's an impact to our community, to our businesses, to, to our individual citizens, and we take that very seriously. But we also have to look at this from a health perspective and we need to protect everybody. Um, we will move forward. We will continue to monitor. We will report regularly on the status of this, uh, of our data and um, the status of any recommendations to, to the order. I think Julie needs to be unmuted. Sorry. Uh, uh, Brian Shockney from IU Health. Thank you, uh, Penny and Dr. Sharp, uh, Penny Caudill and Dr. Sharp. Uh, Brian Shockney from IU Health. Uh, would, do you have anything you'd like to add for us today? I, I don't know that I know. Okay, hold on. There we go. You're on. Yes, thank you. We are in support of this uh, status quo order. Uh, we continue to see uh, COVID patients and are treating patients currently. And as Penny said, the uh, state is bringing robust testing uh, and contact tracing through a contract to the state of Indiana that was announced uh, in the last 24 hours. And uh, we are excited about that and then we'll be able to know what's going on in our community to, be ins to ensure that we don't uh, stress our healthcare system and overtax 
uh, the system as well. So we are in support of this continuation and we will continue to work with the county, the county health department and the city. Uh, we meet uh, three times a week and we will continue to monitor each time we, we meet the stats uh, for making any changes that we might recommend. All right, thank you so much. And thank you again to all the uh, healthcare workers um, in our community, all our essential workers, everybody that keeps us humming uh, during this really difficult time. But we appreciate everyone at Bloomington, um, IU Health Bloomington uh, for their hard work as well. Um, and um, does um, Mayor John Hamilton uh, wish to add anything at this point? Thanks very much. Um, I appreciate the chance just to briefly comment. Um, I want to add my thanks to the healthcare professionals from whom we have just heard who have uh, helped guide all of us and our whole community through the pandemic uh, and responding with science and health. And I really appreciate their continued expertise and guidance on that. Um, some folks know my family had a direct connection to this disease and and uh, thank also all those health healthcare workers who've saved lives and and uh, help people uh, restore their health appreciate that i just would say um you know we are all committed to getting through this we will get through this as a community this challenge uh, but we're going to do it smart and we're going to do it based on science uh, and reason and uh, paying attention to what the experts uh, show us. And while the governor announced today that apparently at the state level, there's been a two week reduction in incidence of, um, of COVID cases, uh, he also made clear that local jurisdictions can have a different experience and actually named three particular jurisdictions that do have a particular ex different experience and we have a different experience. And while he did not name us uh, I think we're doing the right thing, and I really appreciate the collaboration with the county and, and others um, on trying to make sure we pay attention to what is going on on the ground in our community. And we do not have, as, as Administrator Cottle mentioned, we have not met the indicators of, uh, of the gating criteria that suggest when you should loosen up. So we all want to see the community um, uh, evolve toward uh, the normalcy that we hope to get to again at some point, but we're not there yet. And um, uh, I really appreciate the collaboration we're doing locally to make sure we're taking it a step at a time and doing it based on the science. And we will continue to collaborate with everybody on this uh, from the business community to the health community, to the nonprofit community, to the governmental sectors uh, and look forward to working together on that. So we and wholeheartedly endorse this uh, step uh, and, and appreciate the, the guidance of this and we'll look forward to continuing to monitor and, and moving forward step by step as we can. Thanks very much, Commissioner Thomas, appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor Hamilton. Um, Commissioner Giffins, did you want to add anything today? No, I'm just very grateful to all the hard work everybody has done. I'm, I'm thrilled that we have the support of the city and IU Health, um, but we wouldn't even be this far if it weren't for the hard work of everybody that's been involved. Right, excellent point. Um, are there questions or comments from anyone in the public who's on the Zoom call? Uh, if you could indicate by doing the raise hand um, feature, go through participants. David Askins has raised his hand. Mr. Askins, please. Am I unmuted now? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I'm just going to ask all the questions at once, if that's okay. Um, Ms. Cottle, you mentioned that in mid-May, you would be reevaluating. Re um, is there a precise date you can hang on that, or are we just sort of um, uh, leaving it vague at this point? That's one question. A second question is, um, is the goal to sort of eventually catch up to the phasing that the state has laid out, if possible? Because one of the challenges I think that, uh, that Monroe County residents will have is sorting through the confusing messages that they receive through the various media outlets. So a lot of people in Monroe County are going to be watching Indianapolis television stations, which are going to be reporting statewide stuff, maybe not necessarily attentive to the unique situation here in Monroe County. 
Um, is there a particular uh, communication strategy that you've thought through? Um, slogans, perhaps, who knows? Uh, Monroe goes slow, what have you. Um, so those are the three questions, thanks. Thank you so much. I'll turn that those questions over to uh, Penny Caudill and Dr. Sharp. I, thanks, David. I, I like your slogan. I don't know. <laughs> that might be a, a good one. We might steal that. Uh, the mid-May that I was really referencing, obviously this goes until um, mid-May, but that's also when we anticipate that that Optum serve the additional testing site that's going to, to come to Bloomington uh, will be up and running by mid-month. And the state, um, I believe on the 11th, should be set to start or phasing in the state doing the contact tracing. And that's gonna, they're gonna be calling people every day if they're in isolation. Um, they're doing the kind of the whole, um, the whole piece of that. And then our local nurses will concentrate on infectious diseases here in town or any hot spots, uh, special circumstances that we need to address. So when I think about reevaluating, what I really, I guess, meant was that we will do continue to monitor regularly. We look at the numbers every day and we will continue to do that. But I anticipate that by the time this order is is done, we'll have that robust testing. We will have those, um, the enhanced um, contact tracing, sorry, and be able to really have a better handle on where we are as a community so that we can start to, to do those phases. It would make sense. We'll have to see where the data puts us, but it would make sense that we may be able to um, if we're in a good spot, kind of jump into wherever the state is at that time. I don't see that we would need to be on our own timetable the entire time, but we'll have to let the data drive us and see where we are. At the Did I, oh, the communication was your last one. Yeah. And as I said, we might, might have to steal your slogan. I think con continued our press conference on Fridays um, we'll give updates at that time, and certainly if we notice a, if we notice a big change and feel like, you know, as a community we can make changes, move faster, we will certainly share that information and um, share it with our elected officials and, and make changes and adapt as we need to. Did that answer those questions? I think so. I think, um, Mr. Askins, if you have additional questions, just uh, raise your hand again and we'll come back to you. Yes, uh, I, that did answer the question. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay, great. Thanks. I, it's a little slower communicating with Zoom because we are, um, we're monitoring the site. Um, uh, Jeff McKim is next. Yes, thank you. I was just wondering if the uh, health order uh, or this announcement was on a website yet, uh, or or will it be? And if so, I assume it will be. Which which one will be in the main county page or the health department page? We will we will get this on the the main county uh, web page uh, certainly. Um, Ms. Rice, would you like to talk a little bit about this order? And then we'll sure. get to the mayor. Yeah. You're on, Margie. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, yes, today um, we'll, we will be issuing a written order with specifics that I think will answer some of the questions that Mr. Askins asked and other members of the public will have. It is based solidly on the authority that the, that the local health department and Dr. Sharp has, have been given via state statute. So there are references to those state statutes in the order. Also, it references the fact that the city of Bloomington and Monroe County and the town of Ellettsville have their own separate home rule authority. Um, however, in this sort of situation, public health laws trump that home rule authority because we are in a pandemic, as everyone knows, and local counties are given the authority to govern in their specific counties. That's why Governor Holcomb recognized that 
on a county by county basis, there may be different approaches taken, um, not to confuse the public, but to understand that there is not a one size fits all. And so in Monroe County, Dr. Sharp and Penny Cottle have worked with the local units of government and uh, we have decided upon a continuation of the status quo until May 15th. Those specifics are in a written order and um, I think the elected officials on this call can, can talk to you about those specifics, but I just wanted to, everyone to know from a legal perspective, we are on um, solid legal ground to operate independently of the governor because of the authority given to the health department and to Dr. Sharp. Excellent, thank you so much, Ms. Rice. Um, Mayor Hamilton, did you have something to add? Wait, uh, you'll get unmuted here in a second. There we go, does that there work? Thanks, thank you. Um, I just wanted to partly respond to, to Dave Askin's questions and, to, um, and agree with everything that's been said. In terms of catching up to phasing that question, um, we certainly, as, as Administrator Cottle said, will work to do all we can to, to uh, allow more and more activities as appropriate. But I'll just give one example. The governor's order would have, uh, if frankly, encouraged slash allowed gatherings of 25 people to start Monday. That is simply not appropriate from our health judgments of what's going on in our community. And his phasing would suggest allowing gatherings of 100 people starting three weeks from Monday. And I would be surprised if we get there that quickly for this community and given the sensitivity of how many hundred person gatherings there might be in our community. And so even if we do catch up in some ways to some of the phasing, which, which we may well do, there may be other parts of it that we tailor to our local uh, climate needs uh, uh, threats. So just wanted to note we can we may be tailoring that as we go forward too. Thanks a lot. All right, and that is, uh, that is a great point. We, we will be following the data of science is leading us. And fortunately we have great scientific experts in our community, thank goodness, uh, who are giving us the right data and, and leading us uh, appropriately. It's painful, it's hard to, for, especially for our business owners, for those who, who have been impacted with unemployment, financial stress, we get it. But, but we're talking about human lives and we're talking about protecting those healthcare workers who are already working so that they don't get inundated so that there isn't a surge that is uncontrollable. Um, and it's really hard to balance those things out. Um, it is difficult and we acknowledge that and, and it was not an easy decision to make uh, from many perspectives. Um, but are there other questions coming from anyone on this call? Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Sigler? Hi. Nico Sigler. I just wanted to uh, say that I was very disappointed in what the governor had said, Governor Holcomb. Uh, I believe that was way too early for him to start. Some of the things he, his plan seemed a little too uh, early in their implementation. Um, so I really appreciate uh, Mayor Hamilton uh, and the city of Bloomington, as well as the, everyone in the county and everyone who worked together to make the decision to extend this. It's uh, really important to me as a citizen here and as a constituent. Um, I really appreciate the, how serious uh, y'all are taking this, all of our elected officials here in Monroe County and in the city of Bloomington. And that's all I really wanted to say. No real questions, just wanted to share my appreciation for everything y'all are doing. Thank, thank you for that, Mr. Sigler. Um, is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Uh, be sure to use go to participant tab and go to raise hand. Yes, uh, we've got Ernest Rollins from the Herald Times. Mr. Rollins. Uh, you're unmuted. Thank you, Eric. Um, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, um, so my question, I have, I have a few of them for now. Um, how exactly will this uh, local health order being forced, and that as Dave asked in order to some people don't always follow the communications. So if on, people show up on Sunday for regular service, and you guys hear about it, how will you communicate to those that this is not the case for Monroe County? And my next question I have is, 
how does the governor's order impact your ability to continue to provide relief to like food banks and businesses? I know the commissioners were hoping to do another round of food and beverage tax money to help businesses. This is not a complete lifting of the order. This is kind of more of a partial. So I'm wondering if that gives you guys some leeway to kind of get your, to kind of go together and get like the request of funding from the food and beverage tax to help the businesses. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Rollins. So I'm going to divide up the question and I'll turn to um, uh, the health department first to answer the question about enforcement. I believe Penny Cottle is muted there. Yeah, I'm. I, we did you're now. on, Penny. All right, great, thank you. Thank you, Ernest. You know, in some ways I will probably have to echo what the governor said uh, today as well about enforcement. We will continue to do the same things we've been doing, however, with enforcement. We do want to make sure that people understand if they have been closed this week, if they are closed today, they are still closed during this order. And so nothing is changing um, tomorrow for them or next week for them. So whatever yesterday and today was is what things are going to be for them tomorrow. And we expect those rules to be followed. Um, when we have had complaints, we have contacted businesses, talked with them, made sure that um, they understood whatever the rules were. If we needed further action, then we could move that up to ATC or whomever was appropriate. Um, Indiana, I, IOSHA will still be an option. If It will just really depend on what the complaint is. If it's a retail food establishment, for example, then we have the powers within our ability for a permit um, to, to enforce from those authorities. So it really will just depend on what's what's happening, but we always work first with uh, cooperation and trying to get people to understand what the rule is. If, if they didn't understand, if they missed the word, then we'll work with them. And we don't, we don't like to have to do enforcement. Uh, we would much prefer to communicate with somebody and get cooperation. So that's always been our, our goal and it will continue to be our, our goal as we do this. Um, communication, I think, given that the order was late from the governor and, and we know that it's late for us, our food staff is ready to notify retail food establishments um, as soon as we are off of this and, and I can give them the complete update as well and we'll go from there but we'll continue to communicate um, through every avenue that we have all right thank you so much ms coddle uh mr cockrell if you're able to um uh, uh, mr evans will unmute your mic could you speak on the question mr rollins had about food and beverage grants from the county yes i i, I can speak to that um the food and beverage grants from the county um, will continue to remain. I think if you look at the governor's order 25, um, it, it indicated that the emergency is going to be extended until uh, June 4th. So that gives us that kind of time frame. Great, thank you so much. Um, Mr. Askins, did you have a follow-up question, please? Hold on. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Okay. I had a question about the status of public meetings and uh, the ability of public bodies to continue to meet by Zoom. I wasn't able to sort out uh, th by looking at the orders myself. I didn't study them in detail, but maybe Mr. Cockerell or Ms. Rice have done that. Um, I assume that for the for the next 30 days for the uh, through June 4th, we can anticipate meet public bodies meeting by Zoom, or is, or am I wrong about that? All right, thank you for that question. Uh, Mr. Cockrell? Well, I, I will preface my response with, I haven't had a, a ton of time to study them either, 
Uh, but it does appear that the that a lot of the executive orders, the renewal, uh, and I'm reading from his executive order 2025, and it states the renewal of executive orders 20-02 and 20 and 20-17 shall become effective on May 5th, 2020, and I think that extends it to. June 4th of 2020, um, and, and there's a lot of others that are referenced in this in such a short section that it, it does appear at least that, that a lot of these rules are extended through that June day. Thank you so much. Uh, Mayor Hamilton, please. Thank you. I just, I just wanted to note and appreciate the questions from the media and it can be confusing, and I would um, encourage and endorse uh, the media making your first message about this, because you can be so helpful, your first message about this basically to say the county is keeping the status quo for the next couple weeks, uh, despite changes you may read about or hear about locally, we've determined based on the health information we have, we are standing pat and staying where we are for the next couple weeks and that kind of message would be really helpful so appreciate that thank you so much mr rollins did you have a follow-up question please um yes i did um my initial question i talked about what we would what the county will do in terms of providing relief continuing relief but i just realized that we have the city officials on here and i don't know if they want to give an opportunity to talk about what they're going to be trying to do in this time to continue to help businesses as we keep the status quo in the next few weeks, because I know they're probably still processing some applications from businesses for help. All right, thank you, Mr. Sense. Rollins. Uh, Mayor Hamilton, would you address that? So, uh, thank you, yes, the city will continue uh, to operate. We have a rolling program that will continue with the financial assistance and the other kinds of assistance, as well as the social service assistance, uh, collaborating with our partners uh, county and others uh, so we will continue that full speed great thank you um were there other questions um or or uh, comments from the public or the media i am not seeing any at this time awesome um yes just um you know the message it, as confusing as it may seem um from the um you know 200 foot view or the six foot view um, the message is pretty simple, and that is we are continuing as we have been um, through May 15th locally. We are um, maintaining um, vigilance, but we're also going to be flexible. If things uh, turn uh, one way or the other, we are going to act locally to protect our residents, or if things go really well, and uh, then we will, we will act in such a way to loosen restrictions more quickly. We, that's what we all want, but we all want to do it safely um, and in good health. And we cannot thank the community enough for everything they have done to this time. Uh, it's been difficult, it's, it's been tough, um, we know it, and uh, we've all lived it, but we know that, that the only reason we're in as good a shape as we are um, don't see this this extension as defeat, but look at the way that we have flattened the curve. And I think that that's a testament to our community working together uh, from every um, angle and every avenue. So uh, we do appreciate our community and, and we certainly take this, this very seriously and would ask just for your continued patience and forbearance and uh, hang with us and we'll get through this together. Um, did anyone else have any uh, final comments to make? from our group of speakers. Okay, so with that, um, uh, I will go ahead and um, adjourn this meeting. Uh, I wanna thank everyone for being on this uh, Zoom meeting. I wanna thank everyone in our community for their hard work and, our, and the leadership especially, um, Bloomington Health, um, um, IU Bloomington Health, uh, Mayor Hamilton, um, are of course, Penny Caudle and uh, Dr. Sharp. Thank you all so much and uh, everyone be well and we will keep you posted. Thanks. <laughs>